5D Chess with Multiverse Time Travel is a game that generalizes the rules of chess into higher dimensions. How many higher dimensions? Y you know what, I, I don't even care anymore, just believe whatever you want to believe and stop leaving comments. Every day I get comments, is it 5D, is it 4D, is it 6D, is it 3D, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, th this video is going to be live, uh, so I apologize for all of the awkward pauses and vocal missteps and what have you. But yes, 5D chess, it's a game, it, you play chess in time travel across the multiverse, it's quite fun. I made a video about it a while ago. In that video, I ran through some of the problems it has as a game. Here are a few of them. The games are often over way too quickly. Uh, very few of the timelines ever actually reach any kind of endgame state. The result, or the winner, uh, often comes out of nowhere because you just make a random move and, oh, whoops, checkmate. And the AI in the game is not the best. It, it's all right, but it's, it's not the best. Diplomacy is a board game about invading each other in Europe at the start of the 20th century. I also made a video about this. Uh, and I also, well, I, I guess I didn't mention its problems there, but it does have its own problems. Let's consider a few of them. Games often take ages to finish. The 2012 World Cup that I mentioned in the video took three and a half years. It's pretty long. Uh, the result, despite taking a long time, the game's taking a long time, the result is usually known quite early. Uh, there'll be one power who grows way too big and the game ends in quite a stalemate where everyone knows how it's going to go eventually. And the AI is getting scarily good. Uh, this is an update on my video. Uh, I've recently seen some more progress that people have been making on building a diplomacy AI. And there was a video on the Diplostrats YouTube channel recently where they analysed a game where one of the players was a Facebook bot and the bot won. At least I, I believe that was how it ended. But it, just trust me. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the AI is frightening. Or at least becoming frightening. But then, you know, I thought about these lists of problems. And I realised that there's kind of a symmetry going on here. And the problems of 5D chess and the problems of diplomacy are in some way opposite to one another. And I wondered, is there some way we could take the best of both worlds? Could we perhaps merge them and cancel out their flaws? And I promise this decision was not made solely because those two videos are by far the most popular on my channel. That may have been part of it though. Uh, but I did start to wonder, what if you could create 5D diplomacy with multiverse time travel? What if I were to create 5D diplomacy with multiverse time travel? Surely that would be an impossible undertaking that would drive me mad. You know, it, it's, it's such an insane idea. How could you ever create 5D diplomacy? You'd have to be an idiot to want to spend time creating something so useless that you'd never make any progress on. So anyway, here it is. <laughs> um, now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that doesn't look like diplomacy or 5D chess. Uh, I will explain. So this right here is a diplomacy board. It's not the usual diplomacy board. Uh, it's an abstraction of the simplest non-trivial diplomacy board I could think of. So you have three regions, a blue region, an orange region, and a neutral one, and two armies. And you can make moves on this region, uh, on this board, as you would in a normal diplomacy game. You could move this army here or this army there. They could support things, whatever. Uh, of course, in real life, this would be a very, very boring diplomacy game because you'd only have two players and it would be decided basically by luck. But it does offer the opportunity to explore what would happen if you played a very simple game of diplomacy several times at the same time in different parallel universes. So... <laughs> I am going to enter some orders for these two armies. Uh, I'm doing it via the command line because I do not know how to program clicking stuff and inputting stuff via clicks. It's just, graphics programming is not my forte. But uh, so it's a bit cryptic the way you enter orders here, but I will explain. So the first order is 000, move 
zero, zero, one. Now the zero, 00, the first two zeros, refer to the location, the location of this board. So it's currently, like the first board, there's, it's on the zeroth column, zeroth row. There you go, that's, that's the zero, 00 board. And the zero uh, refers to this blue region here. So the, the regions are numbered 0, 1, 2, because arrays start at zero, and it was easier to do it that way. Uh, 0, 1, 2, like that. So the second position here, 0, 0, 1, is the 0, 0 board and the one region on that board. So this army is moving here. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, you may want to go over that again because it's about to get a lot quicker. So I'm going to do the same thing with the 0, 0, 2 army, that being oranges, if I can type it properly. Uh, and then I will type R and it will resolve the orders. So what do we expect to happen here? So the blue army is moving into the empty region. The orange army is moving into the empty region. In diplomacy, this means that they're going to bounce back and no one gets in. Let's find out what happens. They bounce back and no one gets in. Amazing. Uh, but the thing is, there's, there, there's a past board now. There's an inactive board and there's an active board. And all of a sudden, you wonder, is this going to look like 5D chess soon? Let, let's do the next set of orders. Zero, move zero, zero, one. So this is the one zero board, that being this one, because it is one and then zero, height-wise. Uh, and then the zero, so the blue, blue region, is going to move not to the empty region on its own board, but to the empty region on the previous board. Hmm. And let's say somehow he's duped the orange player into making the same move again. Just going into that same region hoping for a bounce or whatever. And then we resolve. Hmm. We've split off another timeline. <laughs> uh, the blue army has moved back in time and just as in 5D chess, splits off a new timeline that's parallel to this one and going this way. <laughs> so we now have a board with two blue units on and one orange and a board with one orange up here. All right, let's keep going. So I'm not going to explain these moves because it will take way too long. Uh, I'm just hoping I can type them correctly. I've got a list of moves here that I know do work because this is quite fragile. <laughs> it's probably got lots of bugs. I haven't found... Well, I fixed all the ones I found, but there are probably lots more. Uh, so, uh, no, that's not right. Oh, God. Uh, uh, I'll be with you shortly. I need to reset things. Right, uh, apologies for that. I had typed something incorrectly and couldn't go back and change it, which would have completely broken this program. I told you it was fragile. Anyway, um, I have typed the moves that I intended to move, and I've added this one here, which is a support order. So the unit at 1 minus 1, 0, that is 1 minus 1, 0, this one here, is going to support the unit at 1 minus 1, 1, that's this one, into 1 minus 1, 2, that's here. So we are moving these two units into there. In diplomacy terms, it's just this one moving one unit plus the support. What do we expect to happen? Hmm. So we've got a support happening here. Uh, and as the moves were written, we had this orange unit escaping to here anyway, but this unit attempting to go in here, but it's bounced back by this one because it's more powerful as, a, as the diplomacy rules tell you. And now we have these two boards at the end of that. So just for more demonstration purposes, let's continue. I shall write the next set of orders and probably skip forward in the editing. There we go, we're in the future now. Um, <laughs> there we go, there's some more orders. So what these orders are going to do is every single thing is moving to the same spot. That is two, minus one, one. So this empty region here. But since they're all moving to the same spot, by diplomacy rules, we expect them all to bounce back, which they do. And the board state doesn't change into the future. 
<laughs> it's, it's starting to look a bit like 5D chess now, isn't it? <laughs> but then we have these supports going on for diplomacy things and these bounces. I, I can't believe I managed to make this, that, that it works. Um, right, let, let's do another example. Okay, uh, I will speed in the edit until I have typed these out. And we're going to do the same first move again. They're going to bounce in the empty region. There we go, they bounce in the empty region. Uh, now for the next move, the blue unit is going to do the same as before, but the orange unit is just going to hold. It's not going to move at all. Uh, it's in 102 is where it is. And then we will resolve that. And you know, we get the same outcome as we did last time. Uh, but now things are going to change. And how are they going to change? I can't remember. I guess we'll find out once I write these orders in. So that one's going to hold, and that one's going to hold. Uh, and then we have. The hard part with this is not, it wasn't the programming, <laughs> it was the playing the game to once it was done. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite tri tricky typing things in like this. But anyway, that, that, those are the orders. Let's see what happens. Ah, that's what happened. <laughs> uh, we had this army moving back in time into this space, supported by this army. So it is actually able to dislodge this orange unit in the past. Hmm. Interesting. So now we have a retreat to deal with because this orange unit, which is now actually down here in the new timeline we split off, is dislodged. So we need to move it somewhere. So it's asking for a retreat. So I will type in the retreat. Bear with me. And there we go. It's just going to move onto the empty region on this board. And there, there's another example. More time traveling diplomacy. <laughs> Uh, I'm now going to speed through yet another example to show you how complicated things can get. So there we go. Um, <laughs> as you can see, the timeline map has expanded a bit. We've got supports and moves and things going everywhere. Uh, they all make sense, but I, I won't bother to explain them because we'll be here forever. Uh, th th there we go. That is that's is 5D diplomacy with multiverse time travel. It works. I did it. Somehow. <laughs> right. Uh, there are, however, I, I am aware, there are some limitations. How do you do adjustment? Uh, that is the getting or losing armies according to the regions you control. Like, when do you control the regions? Is it every second board in the time order according to the time axis or every second turn that you take which boards do you get units from i i really don't know i mean it's an open question uh how do you win is another one because if we take the normal diplomacy rules of just uh controlling over half of the supply centers and apply them to just one board then simply controlling two supply centers on a single board would let you win which feels a bit easy to me, but then this is, of course, a very trivial example, so who knows. Uh, perhaps a bigger problem. What do you do when there are more players involved? Um, you would have noticed that the timelines that we were creating were appearing at the top and the bottom of the board uh, of the um, timeline map, according to which player was creating them. I think it was blue at the bottom, orange at the top. This matches the way that 5D Chess creates its new timelines. When you have a white, the white goes back in time, uh, creates a timeline below. Black creates a timeline above. Uh, a full diplomacy game has seven players. How do you how do you decide where their their timelines go? I I really don't know. Uh, similarly, how what what's the timeline logic? Like, can, how many more timelines can you create than other players, especially when there are more than two? It's just, it's something that was too complicated for me to want to consider putting in right now. And finally, is it actually viable as a game that you could potentially play? I don't think so. <laughs> Even with these very simple examples that became 
very complicated very quickly. Uh, which you can say of 5D chess as well. But at least if in 5D chess you understand the chess rules a bit more. So I, I don't know. I, I'm going to say no. Um, negotiating that many moves across that many timelines take would take more IQ than the entire planet combined. So probably not. The code for this is available on GitHub. Um, please don't look at it. It is horrendous. It is horrible, messy, hacky. Um, I wrote it in like two and a half, three days. Uh, so yeah, that, that, those are my excuses. Um, but if you want to play it yourself, then you can you can go and uh, co clone the repository, run it. It's written in Java because I know how to program in Java. Uh, also, one final announcement. There, well, I have a Discord server now, uh, the Oliver Lug fan server. It's got lots of people in. We want to get more people in uh, to talk about my vi my videos, my music, and lots of other random stuff that comes across people's minds. Uh, the link for that is in the description, so go and join. Uh, I've got more stuff coming soon. I've got two more music things in the next few weeks, hopefully, and then I'll be working on the next big visit video essay uh, that I hope to get out maybe early November. We'll see whether that actually happens. <laughs> I'm not making any promises. All right, this has been Oliver. You have been watching 5D Diplomacy with Multiverse Time Travel. I am an absolute mad lad because I actually made it. It works. Bow down before me. G goodbye. <laughs>